If we wish to understand the thinking behind the politics of Justin Trudeau and his liberals, and more broadly that of the globalist left, who are determined to subvert and wreck the West's foundational principles of freedom and democracy, we need to be familiar with their textbook on tactics and politics. This is the rules of radicals written by Chicago-born Marxist and community organizer Saul Alinsky. He was a mentor of a long line of Marxist and communist activists on the left in American politics, and his influence reached right into the White House during the Obama presidency. Rahm Emanuel, Obama's chief of staff in the White House and later mayor of Chicago, was known to cite Elensky's rule, and one of his favorites was never to waste a crisis. In other words, as Elensky taught, every event or tragedy needs to be exploited as a means to advance the left's agenda against individual rights and freedoms for collectivist or socialist ends that otherwise would be politically unattainable. Keeping in mind Alinsky's rule, we can understand and explain how Trudeau and his liberals operate. They went ahead, for instance, in adopting Motion 103 on Islamophobia in March 2017, despite widespread disapproval following the shooting of Muslims at prayer in a Quebec City mosque two months earlier. In other words, never waste a crisis, and in this case, exploit a tragedy resulting from the criminality of a mentally disturbed individual, Alexandra Bissonnette, to shut down any legitimate discussion of Islamist violence and terrorism that continue to plague the world by invoking Islamophobia or hate speech. Similarly, following the horrific shooting by a deranged Australian, Brenton Tehran, that resulted in the murder of 51 Muslims at prayer in two mosques he attacked in Christchurch, New Zealand, we now have Trudeau's response presented as Canada's digital charter. What we are witnessing is Trudeau exploiting an immense crime that shook the conscience of people in New Zealand and beyond to advance his liberal and left-wing agenda of further crippling a present already heavily constricted principle of free speech. So when we look past Trudeau's platitudes over universal access and transparency to craft a digital policy in the new age of social media, what is evident is a concerted effort to shut down and eliminate conservative speech from the public arena. The vast majority of Canadians, I believe, would have agreed with the parliamentary motion following the shooting in Quebec City condemning bigotry and discrimination against Muslims and or any other group of Canadians based on ethnicity, gender or religion, in contrast to the Liberal Motion 103 that seeks to quell Islamophobia without defining it and which, in effect, constricts freedom of speech in Canada. Likewise, we could all agree with a digital charter that protects the universality and accessibility of all Canadians without discrimination to participate in the digital side of democracy, provided they do not incite violence. However, in keeping true to the Elskyite mode of operation displayed in the passage of Motion 103 deceptively advertised as merely a symbolic condemnation of bigotry, Trudeau's digital charter is disguised to mislead Canadians in believing it will protect their digital rights when, in effect, it is designed to do the opposite. Don't take it from me. Listen to the language Trudeau himself used to announce the digital charter. The platforms are failing their users, and they're failing our citizens. They have to step up in a major way to counter disinformation. And if they don't, we will hold them to account, and there will be meaningful financial consequences. Trudeau's message could easily have been mistaken for a quote from Orwell's 1984. 
he might as well set up a ministry of truth to decide what constitutes disinformation. But wait a minute, he's already done something quite similar in setting up a panel for this purpose. This is the panel charged with the responsibility to distribute the $600 million bribe the Trudeau Liberals have handed out to the media organizations to be liberal friendly in the reporting and the editorials. And among those appointed to the panel is representative of UNIFOR, the blatantly flamboyant anti-conservative labor union calling itself Andrew Scheer's worst nightmare. Just pause and think what Trudeau is doing. He has taken taxpayers' money, doled it out for media organization to be overseen by a panel of left-wing activists and ideologues, such as members of UNIFOR, to ensure liberal re-election and rely on the media to run a partisan smear campaign against the conservatives. Saul Alinsky would be immensely proud on how well his students have learned from him on how to hollow out liberal democracy in the name of protecting the people, as Trudeau is engaged in doing. It is absurd that in an environment where conservatives are already systematically deplatformed, despite not violating any law, that the tech giants will now be pressured to significantly increase their censorship. My friends, the supply in our society of Nazis and white supremacists working out of some dilapidated basements of run-down tenement buildings doesn't come close to meeting the liberal demand for justifying legislations to shut down free speech. And yet Trudeau's unstated objective is not hidden. His purpose is censorship of conservative and nationalist unwilling to abide by the requirements of political correctness that liberals and left-wing authoritarians insist upon, contrary to our long-cherished tradition of freedom of speech. What has happened to the Liberal Party of the great libertarian Sir Wilfrid Laurier? What has happened to Walter's passionate appeal, I disagree of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. How can any classical liberal tolerate such an outright assault on free speech? Indeed, the very success of liberal democracy over any other form of government in history is because the true and tried remedy for bigotry and racism in society is freedom of speech, constitutionally protected. It is not only wrong-headed to constrict freedom of speech, it is contrary to the foundational principle of classical liberalism that we conservatives in Canada and the United States remain devoted to as guarantee for our freedoms. After all the posturings regarding human rights, all the platitudes piled up in defending people from bigots and racists, Trudeau and his liberals barely comprehend the words of Liu Xiaobo, awarded the Nobel Prize for Peace for 2010, and who died as a prisoner of conscience in Chinese custody. Liu wrote, freedom of expression is the foundation of human rights, the source of humanity, and the mother of truth. To strangle freedom of speech is to trample on human rights, stifle humanity, and suppress truth. This is indeed what Trudeau is set upon doing, as someone who has publicly spoken in great admiration about the Chinese system of authoritarian rule that condemned Liu Xiaobo to die in communist prison. Trudeau and his liberals willfully do not understand or care that freedom of speech is always the first freedom to go any time a tyrant attempts to consolidate his power. We are no longer, given Trudeau's malign influence on Canadian politics and culture, talking about mere niceties of policy in the realm of free speech. We need to be concerned about protecting our liberal democracy, 
which cannot function without freedom of speech. And for that matter, without an independent free press and an independent justice system. We cannot let such abuse of our cherished principles go unchallenged. We owe it to our children and grandchildren to leave behind us a free country in which the God-given rights are respected and protected. We must defeat Trudeau's liberals because Canada's future as a free society literally depends on it.